Belinda Carlisle is one of the most famous pop stars of all time, but she has faced the harsh realities of the entertainment industry like any other celebrity. Join us as we unveil how she mastered every hit song, her path to self-discovery, and the way she tackled all the challenges magnificently. Her personal conflicts and battle with addiction will astonish you for sure. See how the Go Go Girls' career expanded from being one of the founding members of the Go Go's band to becoming a renowned solo artist. Early life and struggles. From humble beginnings in California, United States, to becoming a singer, Belinda Jo Carlisle's story shows persistence, passion, and dreams that can be pursued. Belinda was born on August 17, 1958, into a well of hardships. However, she had inherited resilience from her parents, Harold Carlisle and Joanne Thomas. It was a really tough time for her father, who was a gas station driver, and her mother, who was staying at home baking cookies all the time. Her father left them when Belinda had just turned five. Her father not being around had a big impact on her childhood. Belinda, who was brought up in a family living below the poverty line, often thought about the harrowing past that she had left behind, reminiscing about the days when she lived with just a few clothes and barely any food. Belinda's childhood was a nomadic lifestyle. She moved from Simi Valley to Reseda and, lastly, settled in Burbank. These transitions have shown her that she can easily adapt amidst challenging circumstances. Belinda was introduced to music by her aunt and uncles at that time. Being taken by the melodious voices of performers like the Beach Boys, Cat Steves, and the Stylistics became her favorite part of the day. She moved once again, this time to Thousand Oaks, California. Here she had a rough time adjusting with high school life, attending Kalina Junior High and Newbury Park High School. However, Belinda launched her own rebellion as a teenager which bred from her intelligence. She experimented and allegedly went madly wild by the age of 14. She ran away from home, used drugs, and tasted different lifestyles. Immediately after Belinda received her diploma, she took a trip of self-realization and became more mature. She worked as a sales clerk for the House of Fabrics store and as a photocopy operator for Hilton Hotels Corporation in LA, however, her love for music did not subside. Belinda studied night school together with Beauty College at the age of 18, but her real target was the music industry. At the age of 19, she decided to leave her home and head to Los Angeles, which is known for its vibrant music scene. The early years of Belinda's life were all the nightmares that young musicians meet with in Los Angeles. She was crushed by rejections and defeat. However, she consistently kept up her efforts throughout the path of her musical endeavors, early ventures and the go-go's. Belinda Jo Carlisle's music career began in 1977 when she became a drummer for a punk band called Germs. She became famously known as Dottie Danger. She was enlisted in the band right after she met Lorna Doom, who was one of its members, in an art project at Newbury Park High. However, a discrepancy occurred as she was diagnosed with mononucleosis and was not able to record or make live shows with the Germs. However, it was a short-term relationship, maybe only a couple of days, Belinda did backing vocals for another band, Black Randy and Metro Squad. Belinda began a new musical journey with her friends Margot Olivaria, Elisa Bello, and Jane Weedlin, who were the Go-Go's, but they were known as the Misfits originally. Besides Olivaria and Bello, who were the initial members of the band, Belinda Jane, Charlotte Caffey, Kathy and Gina composed the lineup. Even though few of the band members were musically knowledgeable, they understood the importance of doing something significant in the music industry. Belinda could remember their band's starting days when they had to replace fret marks with tape during exercises, and Charlotte had to demonstrate how they powered their amplifiers. The Go-Go's finalized their formation and began working hard eventually becoming one of the most popular American bands of the 1980s. They, in fact, paved the way for new wave music in the American music industry, thereby being the first and the only all-female band to write their own songs and play their instruments. In this way, 
they were able to open the doors for Beauty and the Beat, which debuted at the number one spot in 1981. Namely, the album included hits like The Beat and Our Lips Are Sealed, which cemented their role as trailblazers in the music industry. After the tremendous success of their first record, the Go-Go's continued to make songs. They released their album Vacation, which was also a success. In 1984, Head Over Heels reached number 11 on the charts. The group issued more music that attracted audiences everywhere and boosted a loyal fan base and critical praise. At 1984, Belinda started her career in acting when she played a band singer with Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell in the movie Swing Shift. Here she opened herself up to craft, reflecting her versatility as an artist. The solo career... Belinda Carlisle not only invested her effort as the lead singer of the Go-Go's, but also achieved recognition as a solo artist. Carlisle went on to create her own mark in the music industry following the disbandment of the Go-Go's in 1985. Carlisle released her solo album, Belinda, in 1986 with IRS Records. It became particularly popular in North America after it quickly reached gold status in the US and platinum in Canada. The mentioned album's best catalog of songs is Mad About You, which is considered a radial summer anthem. They Rose the Seismic, which was the first single from their US album, was number three on the Canadian singles chart and got a great deal of success in Australia. Besides the mentioned, two other hits from the album are worth noting, I Feel the Magic and Band of Gold. Together, Carlisle and Lindsay Buckingham of Fleetwood. Mac produced since You've Gone, which was earmarked as the promotional single. Susanna Hoffs, who was famously a member of the Bengalese CO, worked and sang background for I Need a Disguise. Andy Taylor also played guitar on some of the tracks and was featured in the music video for Mad About You. In the meantime, Belinda started her music label and recorded her own material, which was then used in film soundtracks and in separate solo projects. The song called In My Wildest Dreams has been featured in the movie Mannequin. Another one titled Shot in the Dark has been included in the A Thriller. The album Heaven on Earth, which Carlisle released in 1987. It adopted the polished power pop dance oriented sound, which was the popular music style of that decade. The album received a great deal of success and was ranked at number five in the UK and Australia. The songs ended up reaching number one on the Billboard dance chart, also in the USA. The music video for Heaven is a Place on Earth was directed by Diane Keaton, who won an Academy Award, making the song even more adorable. I Get Weak, Circle in the Sand, and World Without You all were loved by the audience. After the groundbreaking success of Heaven on Earth, the Good Heavens tour proved that she could make her mark in the global market with a major sold-out concert at London's historic Wembley Arena. The follow-up effort after her previous success, Carlisle's third solo album, was Runaway Horses, which she released in 1989. The album was another big commercial success, making it to number five in Australia and the UK. It obtained the status of double platinum in Australia, while the platinum status in the UK and Canada. Aside from her own pieces, she also worked with the Smithereens on the song Blue Period in 1989, singing lead vocals and backing vocals with Pat Denizio, the band's lead vocalist. The Summer's Rain was the song that was released as the second single from the Runaway Horses album. It reached number six in Australia. The album was also made up of tracks like La Luna, the title song, and we want the same thing. And that helped Carlisle develop a chart-topping history as a solo artist. In 1990, the Go-Go's reunited for a tour commemorating the publication of their greatest album. The tour also included a campaign against fur coats, which they took on with the animal rights group PETA. This proves that Carlisle also had an invested interest in social matters besides her musical endeavors. It is evident that the five years of Belinda Carlisle as a solo singer were full of brilliant albums, record-breaking hits, and worldwide recognition. The odyssey of her becoming a frontwoman for the new wave band Go-Go's to the extravagance of her solo work was a showcase of her musical artistry. It helped her secure her position as a musical icon. The 1990s. 
In the 1990s, Belinda Carlisle's journey, from the demise of the Go-Go's to her personal boom as a solo artist, bewitched many. Let's enter into this profound era of her musical career. In 1991, Carlisle released her fourth solo album, Live Your Life Be Free. This album embraced 1960s-inspired music. Rick Nowles was the producer, and Carlisle wrote two of the songs for him. The album song, Do You Feel Like I Feel, was accompanied by a video that was inspired by the classic B-movie, The Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. In addition, the song Live Your Life Be Free was the first single for the regions outside of the United States, reaching the top 20 in many countries, including number 12 in the UK and number 13 in Australia. Some other big singles like Half the World and Little Black Book were great hits all over the world. This album did exceptionally well in Europe, getting gold certification while proving her growing appeal for her audience. Carlisle continued to reign in Europe and Australia in 1992. She released her compilation, Greatest Hits, Volume 1, which ranked at number one and was certified double platinum in the UK and platinum in Australia. The record included hits from her earlier albums such as Heaven on Earth, Runaway Horses, and Live Your Life Be Free, among other songs, which further established her as a chart-topping superstar. During this period, the U.S. released a CD named Her Greatest Hits, which featured all her successful works from her initial solo album, Belinda. The artistic development of Carlisle culminated with the release of Real in 1993, which was her fifth solo studio album. The album broke away from her signature polished pop style, being simpler and natural. Carlisle collaborated with her former The Go-Go's bandmate, Charlotte Caffey, to produce a thoughtful and sincere oeuvre. Still, her transition to different soundscapes proved to be successful, and Real charted in the UK Top 10 at number 9. Their first single, Twist and Shout, became a Top 10 hit in the UK, while its follow-up, Lay Down Your Arms, made it to the Top 30. Moreover, Greg Alexander from New Radicals co-wrote the song, Here Comes My Baby with her. Therefore, the album featured her voice as a guest vocalist on the Lemonheads' sixth studio album called Come On Feel the Lemonheads. After the band members went solo in 1994, the Go-Go's reunion was to promote a compilation album called Return to the Valley of the Go-Go's. The album included three new songs, one of which was The Whole World Lost Its Head. Their reunion was, therefore, short-lived, as they split again after the promotional tour was done. She went back to the studio and started to work again with Rick Nowles. In 1996, her solo album, A Woman and a Man, was released on the Chrysalis label in the UK and Australia. This album revived Carlisle's solo career in Europe with a mix of melodious pop. The opening track, In Too Deep, re-established Carlisle in the UK Top 10 for the first time in six years, peaking at number six. However, Always Breaking My Heart, co-written and produced by Roxette's Per Gessel, got to the UK Top 10 and reached number eight. The album gave rise to other hits, including Love in the Key of C and California. In 1997, Disney released the song I Won't Say I'm in Love from the movie Hercules in France and Germany, which was sung by Carlisle. In 1999, Carlisle released an album in the United Kingdom titled A Place on Earth, The Greatest Hits. The first disc from the Virgin label included chart-topping singles, including three new songs written for the album All God's Children. The second disc, titled A Place on Earth, was a collection of her previously released remixed songs and B-sides carefully selected for longtime fans and rookies. The album was given the prestigious gold certification in the UK and sold over a million copies worldwide, which epitomized Carlisle's steadfast sway in the music arena. Later recordings and Go-Go's reunions. The Go-Go's reassembled in 2001, producing a studio album, God Bless the Go-Go's. They worked with Billy Joe Armstrong of Green Day to come up with the song, Unforgiven. Nevertheless, the album got bad reviews, but still managed to peak at number 57 on the US Billboard 200 chart. This was the time when Belinda posed naked for the Playboy cover, showcasing her bravery and independence. 
Carlyle went back to her solo career in 2007 with the release of her seventh album, Voila. The album, which was produced by John Reynolds, featured keyboard player Brian Eno and was a mix of French pop songs. Jane was charmed by the way she sang the French songs of Hardy and Piaf in an enchanting manner. Voila was released in the UK and in the US. It came out through Ricodisc. This CD showed Carlyle's adaptability as an artist, which gave her a chance to explore different musical genres. Carlyle had her first public television appearance in early 2009. She danced in front of a live audience with the professional dancer Jonathan Roberts. She started a new job in the West End production of Hairspray, which was held at the Shaftesbury Theatre in London. Velma von Tussel's role, which she performed brilliantly, was striking for the audience until late January of 2010, when she gave away the role to Siobhan McCarthy. More success. From 2011 to 2012, Belinda Carlisle and the popular group The Go-Go's went on a U.S. tour, offering their fans amazing shows at renowned places such as the Hollywood Bowl and the Greek Theater in Los Angeles. This reunion tour was a nostalgic trip for the band and their faithful followers, proving the enduring appeal of their music. Carlisle returned to music on March 2013 with her first U.S. single in 17 years, titled Sun. Joined by Jane Weedlin of the Go-Go's and singer-songwriter Gabe Lopez, this was a career milestone for her. Sun most probably didn't chart, but it still received positive reviews, which secured Carlisle's place in pop history as a timeless classic. The song Sun was also released in the same year as the compilation CD Icon, the best of Belinda Carlisle, which celebrated her legendary career. The compilation album contained only the biggest hits of her career, proving her uninterrupted success in the music world. Her trademark voice and impossible-to-resist songs touched the hearts again, establishing her place as a pop sensation of all time. The summer of 2013 received three-disc reissues of Carlisle's classic albums, including Heaven on Earth, Runaway Horses, Live Your Life Be Free, and Real. These reissues breathed new life into the iconic songs that Carlisle wrote, offering listeners a better listening experience. Each album showed her artistic growth with the Go-Go's and her successful solo career. The restored releases covered not only the original songs but also radio edits, remixes, and promotional videos to reflect the music in totality. The presence of rare remixes and previously not released material intensified the excitement around these reissues, also attracting hardcore fans and newbies. In March 2014, the The Collection album was released by Carlisle. The album, comprising 18 of her best songs and a new single, Goodbye Just Go, reached number 24 on the UK Albums Chart. With a DVD with 18 music videos, The Collection gave the fans a visual banquet in which they could enjoy Carlisle's greatest performances. The other treasure around the same time was Anthology, a five-disc collection that was digitally restored. The exhaustive extraction unfolds Carlisle's secrets of the musical safe, making the unknown tracks and the hidden treasures of her famous record library available to the listeners. Among the features was Dancing in the City, which was available only on the Japanese LP CD soundtrack. The compilation took fans down memory lane, covering Carlisle's artist development. At the end of the year, the company Edsel reissued solo studio albums, Belinda, A Woman and a Man, and Voila on CD. While no production is perfect, these reissues allowed fans to rediscover Carlisle's wide range of work, ranging from her early solo pieces to her French pop experiments on Voila. Carlisle maintained an innovative edge by stating in a radio interview in August 2015 that she had finished recordings for an upcoming album that would be released in January 2016. The album, which was inspired by Kundalini Yoga, a discipline she had adopted at the time of pregnancy in the early 1990s and continued to teach after being in recovery in 2005, was a mix of music and spirituality. Later, Edsel Records published a box set that contained all the commercially released singles from Carlisle's solo albums, as well as a bonus disc that presented the unreleased studio tape recording in My Wildest Dreams. In late 2016, 
The Go-Go's set out on a global tour with Best Coast, where they headlined that it could be their farewell tour. The tour marked a career-defining moment, showcasing the magic of their timeless music to the audience. On September 2017, Carlisle released her eighth studio album, Wilder Shores, which is a departure from her pop indie music roots. This album introduced Gurmukhi chants and covered Carlisle's spiritual side. Fans were absolutely mesmerized by Wilder Shores, owing to her exquisite voice and melodies that once again displayed her love for singing and experimenting. Carlisle and the Go-Go's announced a reunion tour with 11 dates beginning in June 2020. Moreover, after the cancellation of the tour due to the COVID-19 pandemic, fans were starved for the recreation of the magic of the Go-Go's. The Musical Comeback In May 2021, the Go-Go's became music history makers by receiving an induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The band's groundbreaking work in music was recognized with this High Distinction Award. At the induction event, the Go-Go dazzled fans by treating them to the greatest hits, including Vacation, Our Lips Are Sealed, and We Got the Beat, and repowered their timeless status. Even though the eagerly awaited UK tour with Billy Idol was planned for 2022, its cancellation was inevitable under unforeseen circumstances. Idol's health problems and other things made the Go-Go's make the tough decision to terminate the tour. Besides, the West Coast tour scheduled to be held in January 2022 was canceled because of a member of the tour group who was tested positive for COVID-19, thus showing the challenges musicians faced during the pandemic. Nevertheless, the group's lead vocalist, Belinda Carlisle, stood firm. By March 23, Big Big Love became the first tune of a five-track EP, Kismet, which Carlisle wrote in English after a remarkable period of 27 years. The EP was widely acclaimed and gained chart success in various countries, signifying Carlisle's triumphant comeback to the music world. Besides that, Carlisle revealed that Lopez would produce his forthcoming English-language pop music studio album. Indeed, this news created curiosity among fans, relationships, and family. In 1982, she had a brief romantic affair that lasted for two years with Bill Beamont, who was the Blaster's drummer. Her addiction had already led to the end of her engagement, and instead, she pursued a relationship with Mike Marshall, a Los Angeles Dodgers player. Her drug habit caused a lot of stress in her life. Eventually, Carlisle did find long-term love with Morgan Mason, a movie producer and the son of James and Pamela Mason. He professed his love, and a new chapter in Carlisle's life commenced. The Masons were already well known in the world of showbiz. After the great event of the Northridge earthquake of 1994, Carlisle and her family moved to Freyus in southwest France to find refuge and stability. It was not without challenges to adapt to a new environment, but they swallowed the bitter pill for a new beginning. They succeeded in settling in and plunging into the joys of life. Later, Carlisle and Mason moved to Bangkok, Thailand, where they started a new adventure. Not surprisingly, they followed their spirit of adventure and curiosity in a fascinating manner by merging in with the glamorous and vibrant life of their new city. They relocated to Mexico City in 2023, where they reside at present. Despite her superstar status, Belinda has admitted to having problems with family life. She said that she wanted to be more like the rest of the clan, but then she would also add that she was not able to achieve this because, aside from being distant, she felt guilty about her success. The Battle with Addiction Belinda Carlisle's rise as a prominent artist was long and fraught with an addiction to drugs that lasted for more than three decades. Though a charismatic member of the iconic Go-Go's band, she was forced to live in a realm of stardom and immorality injected with drugs and alcohol. The downfall of Carlisle's life started in her childhood when she got addicted and just could not stop. To some extent, the pressures of being a celebrity added to her habit. Finally, in 2005, while doing a binge in a hotel room in London, Carlisle went crazy. She could, at one point, visualize herself dying and was also accompanied by the sound of a warning voice which was very serious. This strange and disturbing encounter became a trigger for change. Involuntarily, she decided to face her addiction, 
and turned to professional help. She let go of her smoking and drinking habits and replaced all these with a completely new life that focused only on spirituality and her health. Buddhism soothed her. She chose the convoy path in Nikiren Buddhism, and she has practiced it since 2002 as a member of Soka Gakkai International. Carlisle feels that it is Nam Myoho Renge Kyo that keeps her off alcohol and quenches her thirst for inner peace. Carlisle's autobiography, Lips Unsealed, Memoirs of an Addicted Brain, revealed the entirety of her soul to the readers, presenting them with an unmatched understanding of her rehab journey. Nowadays, Carlisle stands as a symbol of hope for all people who dearly want to overcome their addiction. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more exciting ones.